This is the big picture, an official television report of the United States Army, produced for the armed forces and the American people. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Master Sergeant Stuart Quaid. According to Secretary of the Army, Wilbur M. Brocker, the mission of the United States Army is to conduct prompt, sustained, and successful combat operations on land, to defeat enemy forces, to seize and hold ground, and to dominate an enemy and his means of making war. Nothing has occurred which has made the accomplishment of this mission any less important. Though technological advances in modern warfare will undoubtedly play a significant part in any future hostilities, the specific mission of the Army will continue to be of vital importance. To move in, eliminate enemy resistance, and secure and consolidate hard-won gains. In addition, our Army must be prepared to cope with brush fire conflicts or limited local aggression requiring well-trained combat units made up of highly skilled soldiers. The skilled, well-trained soldier is no accident. He is the result of good leadership. Leadership is the key to the successful accomplishment of the Army's mission. Every Army leader is important, from the man who wears stars on his shoulder to the man who wears stripes on his sleeve. Of all the Army leaders, the one who comes in closest contact with the men, the one who can influence the soldier greatly, is the NCO, the non-commissioned officer. In theory and in practice, the non-commissioned officer guides his men, sees that they know their jobs, tests them, corrects them when they make a mistake, leads them on to their missions, and often has their safety in his hands training the non-commissioned officer to be a good leader is a vital job carried on in many army schools in this country. But leadership abroad, wherever our soldiers are stationed, is also important. And in Munich, Germany, the 7th Army conducts an NCO academy designed to fill the need of perfecting the leadership techniques of the non-commissioned officer. Here at the NCO academy, the primary mission is to broaden the professional knowledge, responsibility, and reliability of the non-commissioned officer, and to indoctrinate him with the high standards required of an efficient non-commissioned officer. Well, this is it. Graduation day at NCO Academy. Never thought I'd make it. Never thought they'd be sending me to school in the first place. I was doing my job back at Fort Bragg and doing it pretty well, I thought. Then transfer overseas and NCO Academy in Munich for further specialized training. Hardly seems possible that it was only four weeks ago when I carried my gear onto the school grounds and checked in to begin my training. I had plenty of doubts then about going to school. Who needed a lot more principles and techniques on how to be a good non-com? I knew how to put a squad through drill formation and to teach them how to take apart a machine gun and all the other non-com jobs. I knew the book, I thought, so why'd I have to go to school? Registration. And as I was signed in, the doubts in my mind must have showed plenty. But the doubts began to disappear one by one as I listened to the commanding officer talk on the purpose of the NCO Academy. Take your seats, please. My name is Darnell. I'm the commandant here at the non-commissioned officer of the Academy. You're here this morning to receive certain information and instructions concerning what will be expected of you and what you can expect during the time you're here at the academy. The purpose here also is to make you aware of the tremendous responsibility that confronts the non-commissioned officer corps and to provide you with some of the tools 
that will aid you in discharging these responsibilities. You are non-commissioned officers. I purposely stress that word, officers. You have the same responsibility that I have. The only difference between you and me is that we have a different piece of paper from the government. So maybe just having stripes on the sleeve didn't automatically make successful leaders. Maybe some of those principles and techniques could make me and the other fellows in the class better leaders. A hard, practical course was ahead, the colonel said. Only the best of us would remain to the end. It was a challenge, and suddenly we knew we were going to try our very best to meet it and see it through. Sure, I knew my job as an NCO, but seeing it spelled out that first day in class, I couldn't help wondering, could I answer a positive yes to all those qualifications for a good non-commissioned officer? Responsibility, willingness, confidence, high standards. Had I really been living up to them? Well, now is the time to find out. First of all, dress. Had I been setting a good example for the men as far as appearance was concerned? A soldier has to look like a soldier, especially a United States soldier in a foreign land. In a way, every one of us is an ambassador. They judge our country by how we look and act. But classroom work wasn't enough. I had to follow through with long hours of work back in quarters. Physical fitness is top priority for the soldier, and it's up to the non-com to know the techniques of keeping fit. Sometimes a soldier's life can depend on a limber muscle, a quick physical reaction. An exercise well performed today can mean a life saved tomorrow. To display and develop leadership capabilities is one of the basic principles of the academy. I got a chance at leadership through all command positions. Gradually, I was building a new confidence, the knowledge that whatever the challenge, I would be equipped to meet it. I'd made my share of inspections back in the States, but I never realized that I too was under inspection, that I was measured as a non-com by the degree of efficiency I showed in the performance of my duties. Every major subject of importance to the non-commissioned officer is covered at the academy. Folding a flag is a ritual that calls for careful procedure. I had to admit that I'd never given the job quite the degree of care that was required in our flag code course. Ceremonies and reviews are an important part of Army activity. The proper procedure in conducting these events must be followed to maintain the dignity and respect of every soldier for his country. In practice ceremonies, I learned the fine points of formations that add polish and distinction to an outfit and draw praise from onlookers. One of the non-com's key activities is teaching. And the instructor training program made me realize there was a lot more to teaching than I ever figured. Sometimes even a laugh is an effective way of putting a point across. The point here was the value of using practical demonstrations and visual aids whenever possible. Each day's schedule at the academy brought new challenges. Courses ranged from how to maintain discipline to orientation on world politics, but some mighty interesting subjects in between. Vital among the non-commissioned officer's duties is his ability to lead his men safely to and from an objective. The purpose of the map reading course is to develop this ability within the non-commissioned officer and to teach him the techniques required to conduct effective instruction in map reading. In the classroom, I reviewed map coordinate codes and the basic information used on maps. I studied the Universal Transverse Mercator Grid System, which is a big name for how to get where you want to go in the shortest possible time.
Map compass problems provide realistic challenges to the students at the academy. In the field, classroom instruction came in for practical application as I proceeded with the other students to designated stations marked in military symbols on our maps. We got further instruction on the relationship of map distance to ground distance and how to convert one to the other. We reviewed the methods of expressing topographical variations on a map and the use of contour lines in determining elevation and relief. All exercises are performed under the watchful eye of the evaluator who kept constant check on our progress. At the academy, only those men who can apply principles to practical situations can make the grade. A basic requirement of a good non-com is on-the-spot thinking, the ability to quickly evaluate a tactical situation and take immediate action. The leadership course at the academy stresses development of the student's leadership potential by using small unit tactical problems. Basic combat formations of the squad and platoon are taught. And I got first-hand experience at organizing and grouping individuals into a team. Under simulated combat conditions, I got a chance to prove my ability in getting a squad of men to cooperate with me in handling a tactical problem. Accent here was on teamwork. Four weeks. Four weeks of problems, testing, checking, always probing for better, more effective ways and means to improve. At last, classroom work and field experience paid off in non-coms better equipped for the difficult jobs ahead. The course completed, each of us would return to our outfit, ready to guide, to instruct, to take our place as a leader. One thing above all else that I would take away with me was confidence. Confidence in knowing that as a result of this additional special training at the NCO Academy, I could be sure that I now looked, acted like, and could do what was expected of a non-commissioned officer in the United States Army. No army is better than its leaders, and no leader in the military establishment is more vital to the success of the army's mission than the non-commissioned officer. Only when the NCO knows his job thoroughly and can meet all its demanding requirements can he pass along to his men the knowledge and practical military techniques that add up to ultimate victory. About 190 air miles north of Munich, Another type of training provides one of the most unique and colorful of your Army's activities. This is the headquarters of the Horse Platoon. Attached to the 287th Military Police Company and assigned to the Berlin Command, it is the only unit of its kind left in the United States Army. The Horse Platoon gets its members from the regular Army, drawing on those recruits who have had some familiarity with horsemanship and have selected the military police for their specialized training. All of the men in the unit are volunteers, and most of them have had civilian experience as professional horsemen, ranch hands, or exercise boys. Interviewed and welcomed officially to the platoon, the new recruit is taken to the stable area and assigned a mount.
The platoon has about 60 horses and a troop complement of about 40 men. Having obtained his equipment from the saddle shop, the recruit prepares his mount for a review in basic horsemanship. The average age of the horses is 10 years, and they are selected largely from choice German stock. A few of the animals have come from the 1948 United States Olympic equestrian team. Maybe back at the ranch, our recruit threw a saddle over his palabino, tugged at a few straps and took off. But here at the horse platoon, getting ready to ride is a careful procedure, checked and double-checked by rider and instructor. To maintain the high standards of the unit, a detailed training schedule is followed. Drill in mounting and dismounting usually starts off a typical day with a platoon. Regardless of experience or background, all recruits go through the rigid training program. Control of the horse depends on the rider's sure and confident handling of the mount, correct method of holding the reins, and correct posture contribute to a smooth performance. After the recruit has mastered the basics of horsemanship, he is put through his paces controlling his mount at different gates. In bad weather, a large indoor arena is available for use in training. Horses are trained to meet the particular demands of the platoon, whose principal emergency mission includes dispersal of mobs and control over all types of crowds or disorderly elements. Lessons are carried out under the supervision of German instructors recognized in the field of horsemanship. The mounted training program covers all phases of horsemanship, including jumping over obstacles and other maneuvers which may be necessary in the performance of the platoon's duties. Taking the hurdles under the watchful eye of the instructor, the recruit puts his knowledge of basic horsemanship to an exacting test. Often, men and horses are put through their training amid the various conditions that might be encountered during an actual mission. Each man must complete this part of the training to the instructor's satisfaction before he is permitted to participate in the formal duties of the horse platoon. One of the platoon's principal assignments is to patrol the border that separates the American sector of Berlin from the Soviet zone. Because of terrain conditions, it is impossible to patrol most of this area in vehicles, and the mounted military police meet this need. Survey of the area is carried out regularly by the patrol, and any irregularity is noted.
Like the rest of the military police, the horse platoon soldier must develop the ability to detect trouble spots and take appropriate action. The horse platoon is quartered separately from its parent company, and its stables are located at the southern edge of the American sector in Berlin. While he is learning, the chores are many for the horse platoon soldier. His mount must be kept in tip-top condition. The animal must be washed, groomed, hooves must be cleaned thoroughly, leather equipment must be conditioned, and a host of other maintenance duties keep the men stepping. In addition to his duties as a horseman, the horse platoon soldier is subject to the same type of training that other soldiers receive. And he has the same responsibility for neatness and order that other soldiers have. Regular inspection of quarters and equipment is routine and carried out with meticulous detail. For the horse platoon soldier, who may appear with his troop at various public functions, must always present himself at his very best. Since many of the members of the platoon come from ranches and farms, the atmosphere is kept as close to their liking as possible. In the mess hall, food is prepared and served home style. The final step in the training program instructs the soldier in dressage. Here, every detail is checked for the fine points of horsemanship which separate the amateur from the professional. At the completion of his training, the horse platoon soldier may apply to the German National Riding Academy for a bronze medal, the ultimate reward for long weeks of hard work. Here, the men are given a final review by the instructor who makes certain that all lessons have been mastered before the highly coveted bronze medal is awarded. The horse platoon has become an established army institution in Berlin. Although the platoon is in no sense an official army cavalry unit, it serves to some extent as a present-day link with the tradition of the old U.S. cavalry and its legendary figures. Contests and competition among horsemen in the area provide stimulating sideline activities for the U.S. horse platoon soldier. One of the most popular of these events is Berlin's International Horse Show, which draws thousands of spectators. The horse platoon represents the U.S. Army in this event. Competition in the horse show also provides excellent training for men and animals alike and a chance to exhibit the fruits of the platoon's demanding training program. Participants in the show come from the French, British, and American armies, the German police, and German civilians. Here, the horse platoon soldier competes against the cream of the riding club.
The U.S. horse platoon is always a wide favorite and a leading contender at these contests, having won more than a hundred prizes. The platoon has participated in various colorful dress parades, which attract the German populace from many parts of the divided city. Elaborate preparations are made for these occasions, which put the spotlight on the horse platoon. One of the outstanding ceremonies in Berlin is the Blue Plate Special, a formal military reception afforded visiting dignitaries, both foreign and American. The horse platoon is one of the highlights of this parade. Originally activated in October 1945, the unit was designed to serve as an honor guard, escort platoon, and as a ceremonial element at reviews and other military events. Today, the sleek horses and their accomplished riders are a familiar and popular sight at various functions held in the Berlin area. Each soldier in the platoon is, by virtue of his special training, qualified to be a member of one of the most distinguished units in the U.S. Army. Together, they are a symbol of the teamwork that has built the United States Army into one of the world's finest military establishments. The Berlin Horse Platoon has been viewed by thousands of Berliners and visiting dignitaries from all over the world. The platoon will be long remembered by spectators as part of the team that stands for freedom and peace in the divided city of Berlin. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, your host for The Big Picture. The Big Picture is an official television report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the United States Army in cooperation with this station. <laughs>